Those of you who just arrived, um, we've introduced and, and done a bit of an unveiling of a new gong. The hardware, as I said, is temporary. Um, and we have a lot of guests that are here for an Ascension conference. So first of all, God bless you for making that choice to, to come to something that involves and dedicate. It, you know, it just shows a dedication to something. There's a lot of people doing things on planet Earth that are not about Ascension right now. <laughs> So it's, I think that it's quite beautiful and quite uh, noteworthy and worthy of, of thanks and praise that people are making these kinds of choices. So thank you for being in this conference and those of you who join every Sunday. Uh, you know, it's an interesting thing. Um, we sometimes think that, that even the spiritual path is about stuff, you know, things and fancy stuff and we're becoming spiritual. Remember, you also have to be nice. You know, where's your spirituality if you're not a kind person? Now, we have bad days. We have moments we slip, whether it's into old patterns or a bad moment. Um, you know, kindness. It's just the day-to-day -day kindness. And it's not just kindness to your favorite people, but, you know, how to show up and be the presence of God. Um, one, you know, you folks are asked about several things, and clarity and, our, you know, Christ-mindedness, and these are some of the things that some of the attendees this morning asked us to talk about. And, you know, ascension being one of them, the fifth dimensional ascension into the fifth dimension, you don't get to go to the fifth dimension unless your consciousness is fifth dimensional. I know that's contrary to some teachers who want to sell you something. No offense if you're one of the teachers that want to sell them something. <laughs> you know, I was just going to formulate an herbal something that's going to guarantee fifth dimensional consciousness in 30 days. Um, if you don't have the consciousness, you know, it's, you're not going anywhere. Our, our reality is a mirror of us. If you say, I can't wait to get to the fifth dimension, you have to have a reality shift it's fifth dimensional. It's almost like you're bursting at the seams with so much fifth dimensional consciousness. It's an organic step. It's just like, that, that's where you go. It's not like you can be wicked and go, man, can't wait to get away from these screwed up humans and get to my fifth dimensional home. There's nobody, they're locking the doors on you. They, it's not going to happen. You have to be the consciousness. You've heard me say, you don't go to heaven, you grow to heaven. You've got to be the consciousness. I mean, honestly. And again, I know that, you know, rubs some people the wrong way. But I'm, I'm, everything we do in the meantime, stand on one foot, pranayama, you know, uh, spin clockwise on Mondays and counterclockwise on Tuesdays, do alchemical joining with another person. All the things we do, they're all beautiful. They really are. There's a lot of things humans do that aren't very beautiful. So all of it's wonderful. Forgiveness exercises, all of it. All of it is called, in A Course in Miracles, a happy dream. Instead of a nightmare, you're doing a happy dream. So it's all really good. But those things are only support systems, like wearing a cast while you need one. Taking your diabetic medicine while you need it. It's just for now. Even those things, my, my herbal things that, you know, that help me wake up and feel alive in them, my, my yoga, whatever it is, those things are part of the happy dream. And well deserve, you well deserve these things. But there are, there are other, there's another level that you can't get to with stuff, nor with doing. And I just realized, so part of what we're talking about is human beings versus humans doing. So... We talk about, you know, we call ourselves human beings, but nobody's being. Everybody's doing. Everything we're doing, you know, on this planet is compensatory. We're taking a little supplements because we don't get enough nutrients in our food. It's all compensatory. Relationships, oh, I've got to have somebody in my life, you know, or I'll be alone. Everything people are doing, saving up money. It's all about a rainy day. That's not fifth dimension. You got right? Think about it honestly. That doesn't mean don't do it. Here's the trick. Know the truth, but respect the illusion. The truth is, I am so far beyond fifth dimensional beingness, 
I'm beyond dimensionality. I'm part of God and I am very holy. So I'm not looking for the fifth dimension. That's going to be a place that I go to on my way to who I really am. That's only a stop-off place. However, don't start thinking about 12th dimension. Just one, You're in the third dimension right now. Be nice in the third dimension. And you will become so blessed with your good karma and your kindness. Before you know it, you're fifth dimensional. By being nice. More than techniques and everything else, those are helpful. But did you forget the technique called love? And people talk the word technology. Don't ever call love a technology. The word technology means there's a science or a something to it. Love, love, whew, the being. Technology still involves doing, which is good. Do good. Do, use good tools, all of that. But are you becoming the thing you're talking about? Right? So the gong, the gong makes me holy. No, it doesn't. It just, it just doesn't. But you know what's amazing? Is when I remind myself that I'm holy and use the gong to get in that space and stay in that, just enjoy that vibration. Otherwise, it's going to be bong, oh, I feel better. And then tomorrow you need it twice. Bong, bong, pretty soon three times. You know what I'm saying? It's compensatory. It's not enough and now it's an addiction. So the difference is, instead of doing things to become God or find God, you do them because you are. That's a different, completely different tactic. Because I am. I don't feel like I am all the time, but you are. So just say that. Man, today I'm not feeling it. Have a bad mood. Screaming, puking, do what you need to do. Get it out of the way. And they kind of laugh at it, you know? Isn't it funny? That I'm on some level a divine being, and I just sometimes still act like an ass. You know, just like, <laughs> isn't that weird? I got to get over that. I got to work on that a little bit. That is more honest and more organic and more influential to your shift to a higher dimension than a person who goes, oh, I have no issues because I'm already fifth dimensional. Really? Let me kick you in the leg and let's find out. <laughs> and let's, let's find out. Because if I go to kick you in the leg and I find no leg, you might be fifth dimensional. <laughs> it might be happening. I don't know. Sorry, you know. So this morning on my way here, you know, I knew we had meetings and so forth. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on time. It's nice. You know, I'm getting here on time. And I'm coming up that hill down that way, you know. And I saw a couple walking and the guy's hands out hitchhiking. Oh, they're going the other direction, you know. I'm like... Oh, fine. You know, just like you, you see it, you feel it. You know, you turn, go back, pick them up. They get in the car. The girl goes, I watch you on YouTube. And the guy's going, dude, does the, you know, oh, yeah. Aren't you the guy? For, I'm like, I'm not doing this, you know, because they recognize. I don't know that, but it's kind of funny and kind of awkward. Now they're like, well, um, where can I drop you guys off? Please don't be too far away. Please don't be too far away. You know, where can I drop you guys off? And he says, well, we're, we're going to this particular church. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? No. And I can feel the awkwardness. Well, um, the, um, and I go, dude, it, guys, it's okay. And they're kind of apologizing the whole way. And, uh, and they're, they're going to probably see this later. But I'm sorry. <laughs> do, not, do not at all feel funky. Bring the light. It, I said, I'm really proud of you guys for going somewhere. And it might be that they, you know, try a few things here and there. But they're going to go where they feel called or comfortable that day. Not everybody's going to handle it. You know, not everybody's going to, you know. You know, not everybody's going to, and me. I mean, look at me. Like, you know, not everybody's going to go, this feels really good, Yeah. Let's go to the long-haired guy with an earring and whatever else, you know. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, I can't do any more hippies in my life, you know. So it's all fine. And, and, and laughing. Irreverence to a degree. But at the end of the day, kindness. People have forgotten on planet Earth about being. Just so easily caught in doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But humans fell to a point where their doings were violent. What they were doing was violent, 
hurtful, selfish, insensitive. Some of our parents were hurtful, violent, selfish, and insensitive. Some of their parents were. Nations, tribes. It, it, it became the way to live, which isn't living at all. It became the way to survive, but it's not surviving at all. It only became the way to destroy. And that's all it ever was. Hurtfulness. And spirit, this whole time, was never going, oh, I can't believe the way you behave. Spirit can't even see the illusions and the hatred because it's pure love. So all it can see is you're awake or you're asleep. When you're asleep, it's not aware of your nightmares and your nightmarish behaviors, believe it or not. It's just this tone spirit puts out, which is, I love you, come home. And we're like doing hurtful and weird things for generations, thousands of years. You know, Atlantis and, you know, all the things that we've gone through, what we call history. Spirit's just, I love you, come home. And we forget that that's how simple spirit can be. We're like, no, no, there must be graduations and levels and variations of how much God loves us. And God's the one that, you know, punishes us. There's people, there's religions that say, oh, you know. I mean, there's religions that thrive on the guilt and shame aspect of God. Well, you know, you've been naughty. Oh, it's just terrible. You know, you mate. Oh, I've been naughty. I mated. But everything in nature mates. Dust particles are probably getting it on now and again. Like, everything, it's just this way. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, but, but I've done things, you know, like, I've smoked pot. I've done heroin. I've... God doesn't go, pot, okay, heroin. That's not God. God says, honey, I'm so sorry that you felt so scared. God, I'm God, that's all God's doing. I love you. Come home. Yeah, but I'm, I'm wicked. I'm hurting myself right now. I'm, I don't believe in myself. You can think anything you want. I'll just wait. Because it's perfect. Perfect love casts out sin. Means perfect love can't see sin. Can't even see it. And we're here doing penance. God's going, what you guys doing? Oh, penance. If it's Christian, it's penance. If it's Eastern, it's karma. And God's going... Do you realize you fabricated all this? There is just the peace of God. You can just come home now. Oh, no, no. I've got 16 more lifetimes. I've got stuff to work on. You know, okay. Whatever. And so it is. The third dimension has that affirmation. And so it is. Fifth dimension is and so it isn't. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, I don't think so. In the God aspect of consciousness, there's no dimensionality. So don't think fourth or fifth or 18th dimension is where God is. God's here and now. Buddha says, you have to lift the veils to know God. It's not a place you go. Your consciousness sees us. So, so Jesus can be walking or Moses or, and still walk with a confidence that is not of this world because they're not living in the trance that this world drives home. This world will tell you Think about ascension. Think about fifth dimensionality. Think about healing. Think about not reacting to people and it'll tell you there's something wrong with you. It's constantly programming that. Everything in this world, look in the mirror, every mirror is telling you you're aging. You don't even have a body to age. But you have to get into the consciousness. And if you have a wrinkle, you don't notice or care. You just, you're not there. That's not your consciousness. It's the illusion might seem to be, but if you want fifth dimensional consciousness, part of getting there, and I'll say a few things about that, but part of getting there, first of all, is working on the things in you that are not very fifth dimensional. And that's called Armageddon. See how I snuck that one in there? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is what Armageddon is. Except that's described as a glow. What, what St. John in Revelation was doing, he was doing a Nostradamus on us. He was saying, wow, as far as possibilities and probabilities, here's what's going to happen in the world. Anybody could have figured that out and said it, but he was enlightened enough to see it and say it then. Everybody could have seen it. You know why? Because everybody must go through the dark night of the soul, individually and collectively. Everybody's got to go through Armageddon. What is Armageddon? It's, it's when the ego rears its ugly head and says, I refuse to let you be fifth dimensional or whatever else. 
I refuse to let you go home. I will not let you forgive somebody that has hurt you. Which sounds like, oh, he's so kind. Thank you for not letting me give in to somebody who's hurt me. <laughs> Hello, friends on her phone. Um, you see what I'm saying, though, right? It's like, you know, the ego sounds well-meaning in that. But it isn't. Because what it wants you to do is stay in the pain. When it says, let's not forgive others, sounding like, because it's, you know, you, you deserve to feel hurt. It's, that's not what's happening. What it's saying is, I want you to hold on to the hurt. Why? Because the hurt breeds hate, and the hate feeds ego, evil, darkness. And then we have war to mirror it to us. So, thank you, dear. So, out of the mouths of babe, right? babes, right? So, just think about this. Like, Armageddon isn't an event. If you study Armageddon, you hear about the beast rising from the sea. That's your ego coming out of yourself. And there's a few beasts because there's a few levels of ego. And this, this, all this story, you know, this sounds so horrific. When it's talking about locusts coming from the pit and striking man and causing pain, those are my issues. That's all. The, they're my stuff. If I don't have stuff, the Re book of Revelation would have said, uh, amen. <laughs> it, it, would have, it wouldn't have had anything to fill the pages. Because I don't have locusts and beasts and all these creepy things. So, but when you read, if you study, if you know of, of Armageddon, you, you know it includes things like the last judgment. And you know, what we, we actually fabricate this. Um, there's a saying, and, and man created God in his own image. Did you notice that the words were flipped? This is from Jethro Tull's album. Um, <laughs> Aqualung, I think it is. And, and man created God in his own image. That's brilliant. Instead of God created man. We're made in God's image. And that's the being that we are. We created God in our, our image. And that's where doing starts. Because we have to fix everything we've messed up. We have to fix the karma. We have to fix everything. No. I am as God created me, and I choose to be the Christ on earth. Christ meaning the God presence. And I slip. What do I do then? Forgive. And other people slip. Forgive. Because that's what God would do if God were embodied on earth. And it is in me. So how beautiful is that? And so we hear about the, the last judgment. <gasps> and then we go, oh my God, and depending on your religion, what's the last judgment? It's horrible. People from the East would say, oh, there can't be really anything like that. People from the West go, yes, there is. And this is where, you know, whether Jewish, Christian, whatever, they believe that there's some moment where God takes people, brings them from the dead and judges them. And, and the odds are just terrible that you're going to do well at that moment. <laughs> it's just not good at all. I don't care which religion you chose. It's just not going to go well. So what does it mean? And God will resurrect and judge them all. It's very simple. It means that God will help you wake up. And when you do, your last judgment will happen. Which means you will make your last judgment. And it will be the judgment that I am holy and not sinful. You, the last judgment means you will no longer judge. It's the last judgment. How did we do that? My beloveds, I'm God. And I'm telling you, the last judgment's coming. Uh-oh. Instead of going, oh, thank God. That's when judgment ends. Oh, no. No, no. Something leaked in there called the ego and said, oh, you better be worried. Be very afraid. Because the last judgment. <gasps> you know, and then if we're certain religions, I, I won't specify. You'll know the one I'm talking about. There's some that are so into guilt. And they're like, here's what's going to happen. But I didn't do a lot of horrific things. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I smoked pot. You know, I smoked every day. I got my little bong out and smoked pot. Oh, you know what the religion says. God is going to reach its hand down. And it's a huge, powerful hand. And it is going to squash you. Then it's going to stuff you in a cosmic bong bowl and smoke you. Just smoke you. That's called hell. You know? And it's just, you're going to just be, and that's called hell because you're in the fiery pit. This is what some religions are going to tell you. <laughs> Those of you who are guests, you're probably sorry already, right? <laughs> so, this whole game of guilt and shame and fear, even karma, don't think East is better than West, West is better than... All of it is still mankind's variations on how much we're willing to open up. 
Can you stand when people say, well, I'm almost there and I'm, I'm this and I'm fifth dimensional, I'm 18th dimensional. You stand. When you can stand and cast no shadow, you're probably really becoming cosmic. When you walk in snow and still leave, or mud and still leave footprints, stop telling me how cosmic you are. And it's not that you're bad, because your job is not to try to be beyond everybody else and beat them to the fifth dimension. Your job is to act fifth dimensional while you're here. Act nice. Be kind. Right? That's it. It's, it's like, don't talk about where you're going to go to become cosmic. That, I understand. I understand that. I do. I understand. Just like wanting a soulmate to fill your life, just like people that get into addiction. They're doing it because they really want something that feels better. That's not wrong. It's just misguided. This, it's just as misguided to think a person will make you feel complete, just like a drug. I am complete. Help me to bring my completion into a relationship instead of going into one to find it. Because it will not work and I'll punish them for it. You made me think you would always be whatever it's going to be. And then they purposefully will become something else because that's their way of saying, you know, <laughs> you know, no, unconsciously, you know, you have kids and perfect and straight A's and all that sort of thing, you know, and then they, they, they get into drugs or whatever and it, it upsets you. But the upset that's happening is actually you're seeing your own agendas. What made you think that them slipping and not getting straight A's meant that they're bad? This is the parent being tested. I love you beyond what I thought I wanted you to be. I thought I loved you at this level and that crashed. And now I need to love you at this level because everything goes through three stages. A lot of us would like everything to stay frozen in the first stage because that's where, where we want them to be. That's little, little programs and boxes that we put people and religion into. There's a point where you become so filled with the presence of God. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. I am as I am. I am as God created me. You are as God created you. Everything, But that's, that's a lot to ask for, to be able to hold that consciousness while people run over your foot by accident or you fall off a ladder and you feel pain. It's, it's not easy. But that's where the homework starts. That's where the, the work begins. Some of you, again, are attending a conference here right now. And I remember um, I started this kind of a saying, and then I really appreciated that other spe speakers at these conferences started using it as well. I remember like Greg Braden, he started saying, I really love this thing that Michael made up, and, and, uh, you know, I'm gonna, and he started using it. And that was when the conference was ending. We used to say, the conference isn't ending, it's now beginning. You have to take everything you heard that felt right for you and go live it. Instead of going, my, that was interesting. You know, just stuff going in your ear. Words, technologies, te techniques, um, experiences, and whatever else. The most profound meditation is worthless if it doesn't change you. I, be I totally believe that. Them sharing, giving me the meditation, giving me the technology is one thing. If I don't retain it, which is called integration... What does it mean? You know, you go to a counselor and they help you look at stuff and cry it out and so on. And you get back in your car and you just go right back under. You know, what? why did you see them? You wasted a lot of money and a lot of time. And your counselors, it's not their fault, it's yours. But their, their, their responsibility is to at least remind you of that. Remember, when you leave here, sit in your car, breathe in the presence of God. Refill with that which we spilled out. You see? Remember to bring in something new to yourself. These counselors can be and should be saying. Remember to refill in your car before you drive. Because you think you're going to do it. Oh, that felt really good. I cried out this. I cried out that. You get in your car, somebody cuts you off, and you, you go right back. So we have a responsibility to become higher dimensional. It's, it, you cannot become higher anything without integrating what you learned from the last dimension. Integration. So you're talking about Christ mind and, and words like clarity. These are some of the words that folks shared here, uh, living this presence and living peace. And, you know, I love it all. And, and to me, they're all, and forgiveness, they're all part of it all. These are all facets of this going home. Home is the center. These other things are facets to that place. 
You don't want to say this religion has it, that does it. They're all just doorways and windows to the same home. But if I take the one I like and tell you mine's better than yours, I'm already not acting the center. Well, it's true, right? I'm not acting the center. And if I get something profound from one of these facets, but I don't integrate it, I'm not becoming. I'm still doing. Constantly doing and doing. And, and again, supplements, take them. Take your meds, take everything you, you know, for now. Until you realize, now I don't need that and you move higher and higher. It'll happen organic, organically. Don't make it happen. Don't try to make it. Don't say, oh, I went to this Ascension conference and I realized I don't need my bipolar meds. <laughs> don't do that to your loved ones. You'll tempt them to hate Ascension people. Because you're not being responsible. Take them. And, well, I don't need to because I'm a holy being. I know. And if you're holy, if you really understand how holy you are, you'll realize it doesn't matter if you take the meds. It's okay. Because you're so holy that, well, I can do that. If you say, I can't do that, you're proving that you're afraid. That isn't holy. You're trying to prove something. Even if you're into a religion and you go and preach your religion to other people. The more you preach it, like George Harrison saying in a couple of his songs, the more I say, the less I know. The more you preach it, it doesn't mean talking means you don't know. Preaching. The more you try to convince people, the more it shows that you're actually insecure about the topic. So when you get people, oh, no, no, that's wrong. And you're going to go to hell. And Jesus, you have to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. And so on. Preach, preach, preach. Don't forget, drop your shoulders. Instead of going, oh, my God, get me out of here. Drop your shoulders. <laughs> And breathe. It's okay. It, I am as God created me. No, you're not. Uh, Jesus, you're going to go to hell. Wow. You accept Jesus as your personal Savior? No, I'll share him with you too. Right? You get that one? Right? No, I'm not selfish that way. I'll share him with you. Come from a different place. Be able to laugh to some of you. Like, you know, this might seem like, God, this is weird, this talk. It's irreverent. It, good. Because this world is an illusion and it has no real power over you. And you should be able to laugh at it now and then. It has no real power. I've shared stories here of, of all kinds of things, you know, to say that I can laugh at these things. And I'll share things, things about myself. Because to me, it's funny. It's not any sort of compensatory thing to do. It's like, see through it. It is funny to say, isn't this weird that... We are divine, holy being. I'm talking divine, not, I'm, here's the divine one. No, the more you think of yourself as a mortal self, you're already affirming you're not a divine self. The more you think you have to eat, it confirms you're mortal and not divine. It's true. The more you, you brush your hair, you brush your teeth, all of the things of the material world are the ego's way of making us not feel divine. So what do you do? Don't do any of it. Don't eat. Don't sleep. Don't do any. I'm, I'm holy. I'm going to get this. I'm going to, you know, and then you go so extreme. You know, you go vegetarian and then you go vegan and micro macrobiotic and trying to, to prove and then pretty soon fast. Don't ever eat again. Fruitarian. And you just now you're fasting to prove lay on a bed of nails. No comforts allowed. Right. Nothing like that allowed. What's the answer? How much do, uh, intimacy do you believe in? None. How much uh, sensuality do you believe in? None. How much fun do you believe in? None. What are you? A nun. You're... <laughs> Sorry. Um, you haven't really gotten anywhere. You're just denying. So our spirituality is not to dive in and just go, oh man, you know, the, the world's an illusion and I'll just do any of it. That's not an answer. Although some Gnostic schools went that way. The Bacchanalian, you know, festival. I'll just total let go. But that's not the answer. The opposite, don't do anything. Don't smile. Don't show pleasure. That's the other extreme. Somewhere in the middle is, isn't this cool? Because I can feel pleasure and stay centered in God. I can say no and fast for a day and still stay centered in God. See, it's this beautiful place in the center. The other extremes, it's just too much. It's not necessary. But humans love extremes. Why? Because you'll almost always fail when you try to do something extreme. In the center, there's no fail. Because as soon as I go, oh, that was too much back, I keep succeeding. Instead of just trying all these things, you know, reading the labels to be holy, that's not what's going to make you holy. 
how much you forgive yourself. Forgiving yourself for when you didn't eat ways that nourished your body properly. Forgiving yourself for drinking things that, that were not right for you. But you see through it. You know, you just go too far and fasting and, and pretty soon it's like, like basically this is the story of Buddha. One of his main stories. He fasted and fasted and fasted. You know, and everybody likes to show the jolly. That's just one, like a, a made up version of Buddha. The, the, you know, large body and he's smiling. It's, it's about abundance and happiness. It's a symbol. Buddha, who was more Indian more than he was Japanese or Chinese and so on, he, he fasted to the point where you could see veins lying against his ribs. I mean, his whole stomach was concave. You could see his organs because he was gone. He's too much. And then the famous moment, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing and summarizing, famous moment where... He hears somebody playing a sitar and he realizes it doesn't work if the strings are too tight or too loose. I was going too far. When he dies and they say, but Buddha, you're enlightened. Why are you dying? What did he do? Does anybody? He opened his, his rope and he pointed at his body. What he was basically saying, what I did to my body has taken a toll and it's too far gone. That's what he was saying. And it's okay. Beautiful. Because he got it. He, he still died. He didn't judge himself for it. He fasted. Do you think he dwelt on that? Oh, geez, that fasting thing. I shouldn't have done that. No. You laugh. You laugh. Buddha had a sense of humor. When he was looking for the, the person that was going to follow him in the leadership of Buddhism, all these disciples and, you know, all these sitting there just gathered. And, and hour after hour, day after day, they're waiting and he's not selecting anybody. And they're all sitting and, you know, you know what they're doing. I'm going to sit perfectly. He'll choose me. You know, if I just, you know, and then I heard a bird squawk, but I didn't respond. This is going to impress him. N he wouldn't pick anybody. Then one of the monks started laughing. And he said, that's him. <laughs> See, because he laughed. That means he got something. He, la he laughed at himself. He laughed at how serious and weird this all is. He laughed at wanting to be best. You just see through it, you know, and it's like, you know, well, how silly. Buddha said, that's the one. Imagine in this case, Buddha then is God, and we're not laughing. You want to go home, you want to be fifth dimensional, you've got to be able to laugh at the third dimension. I'm not saying everything in the third dimension is funny. But when you really get it, there's a part of us, you, you know, me and all of us, there's a part of us that, that says, you know what? This is too much. This is, you know, I get it. People hating each other. People enslaving each other. Why did you enslave people? Because you thought you controlled people by enslaving them. But you didn't. I mean, didn't Mandela explain, is, it kind of demonstrate that? Solz Solzhenitsyn and, and, and Viktor Frankl in Auschwitz? These people are saying, you actually thought you enslaved me? No. That was the game I played along with. Jesus says, you know, you, you think you can crucify me? Think about how these powerful beings demonstrated this, men and women, in history. A, a, a woman who, who's some husband, well, I'll just leave, man, and I'll take the money because I, I got the attorneys. That's scary, it's sad, that's not funny. But what is, becomes funny is when she realizes, this dude actually thinks he has power over me. That's kind of funny because he's insane. It's kind of funny for her to go, I have no money. And this has happened to my godmother, who was a very enlightened woman. She had this psycho husband. This guy was really big, man. He was big in the trade, the unions. He was big in the mafia. He was big, all kinds of areas of life that he had power and money. And he used to chase her through the house with weapons to, to harm and threaten to harm her. She'd be screaming for her life. He'd be laughing. Go ahead. I, can, I, I need help. He goes, go ahead. Call the neighbors. Nobody will believe you because of who I am. And she lived in that for years. And I didn't understand. I was just little. But I remember one day, my father, who was just as crazy as this guy was, he said, you know, uh, you're a godmother. We're not talking about her anymore. Which you know that because she's right. But that's not the way this world does it. Well, we're not going to talk about her. She's gone crazy. She had a nervous breakdown. She's gone crazy. That's what I was told as a kid. Really? Now, as a kid, I'm like, oh, what does that mean? And I feel bad for her. I'm scared for her and so on. I realized when she showed up in some 
hand-painted bus that looked like the Partridge family bus, and she said, I'm going to Oregon to live in a community. She had a backpack, jeans, and she just comes up to me, Michael, I know your parents are crazy, and I'm very sorry that you're having to live with that. Everything will work out. Hang in there, but I'm going. I'm moving. I'm like, where are you going? Oh, I met people, and they all love, and, you know, it's like she's a hippie. And she said, Michael, but I'm happy. First time in my life, I'm happy. So which one of those two worlds, right, is real? Which one's more, more accurately higher dimensional? The one that was labeled insane. He put her in a hospital. She had to wait till, till they let her out. She was, she was held captive. This isn't something that happens to one race. Everybody's held captive by this world. We all believe that this has power over us. Smile. Smile. Remember Jesus on his way to the cross, as is said in one of the lost books of the Bible. On his way to the cross. And, and one of your words that you asked about is clarity. Boy, you talk about clarity. Clarity is not just like in communication. Clarity is right here. I know exactly who I am and what works for me. You can lock me up, but you cannot control me. And eventually you're going to get tired of locking me up. And then I'm going to be free anyway. So you can't, you can't defeat me. You can still take me out of this life. You can kill me. And I'm still free because on the other side I'm laughing. So Jesus says that to Pilate. Do you think you... It's a, oh, picture this. Jesus going, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Do, you know, because Pilate's like, do you realize I have the power to crucify you? Jesus, you know... <laughs> do you think you actually have power over me Re really god check this out this this is this is startling that's what he was saying and he says you have no power other than that which was given which means jesus was owning i'm using you i'm just using you to play this role i'm gonna crucify i'm good to do that because i know what i'm gonna do with this lesson so I'm just, you know, going along with the, the game here. In that moment, Pilate's, you know, just stumped. I was trying to tell you, be afraid of me. And you weren't afraid of me. My godmother, and she wasn't afraid of him. And pandemics, and it doesn't matter. But, but I wasn't afraid of the pandemic, but I still got the, so what? Even if you pass over, do it with a smile. I see what I'm good doing here. Oh, good one. Good one. It's an illusion, but I'm still going to smile on my way out. You know, it's like P.T. Barnum said, when you're being thrown out of town, make it look like you're leading a parade. <laughs> right? So you lay there and you, oh, this disease shouldn't be getting me, you know, and, and spiritual people do this. We talk spiritual and then something happens, divorce, we lose money. How, how could that happen? I'm spiritual. What we're supposed to be doing is make it look like you're leading a parade. So your you last few breaths with COVID, you should be like, dun, 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 you know, I know that sounds impossible. People have done it. People that were in far worse circumstances than your divorce, your job loss. None of it is fun. I'm a healer, so I'm sensitive. I, I know what it feels like for people to be in pain. So I don't just laugh it off and say it's all an illusion. It is all an illusion. But when people are in pain, hold them. Take people's hands. Pay people's funds in their grocery line. To the end. To the end. And I've, I've just, this week, this has been downloading more, even more to me. The more money I give, the more I'm going to give out. I just feel that way. And then, then this voice says, dude, do you realize, you know, the world's getting very challenging. People are like, how do we save money? And I'm telling them advice, materially, how they might be able to survive and, you know, deal with the changes in the world of any kind. But I'm like giving money away. Any bit I get, I just kind of feel like I'm just going to spend and give it. Why? I, I don't know. Because that's what you do in higher dimensionality. Now there's a little voice that said, you do realize that if, if all the food supplies goes down, your supplies might also go down. And almost anything I eat is just pizza. <laughs> so I stock up on I have tons of boxes of pizzas. And they're in my freezer, and that's what I eat most of the time. But one day, even those will run out. I have to be okay with that. You have to be okay if your partner runs out on you and your food runs out on you. 
It's going to happen in the third dimension because this world is going to scream Armageddon at you. It's going to scream Revelation. Bad news, Revelate. well wait, why are we calling it bad news? What does Revelation mean? You know what the word means? When God is revealed to us again. Why did we make that into a bummer? Because the ego doesn't like it. So it's a bummer to the ego. You know, I don't like this whole, rev this whole revelation thing. Why? Because I will cease to exist. Oh, I'm so sorry. But when it happens, the ego is going to pretend that it's a painful thing. Don't let me go. First, it'll threaten you. And when it realizes it can't convince you to buy into illusion anymore, what it's going to do is try the opposite. Oh, listen, um, I've always been there for you. It's going to try whining about it. But there really won't end up, in some cases you could think, I'm melting. But <laughs> for the most part, be prepared to hear somebody scream, I'm melting. Just know that. When it says, don't give up on this relationship just because they beat you up every day. You know what? Goodbye. Yeah, but the money, goodbye. Have no fears from this world. It has no power over you. And I'm saying it doesn't have power. I'm not hoping it doesn't. We are God. Nothing has, there is nothing else. How could something else have power? But I need to remember that I am God. And then it's not just a lofty, I'm remembering, it's you have to act like it. Give where you can, how you can. Be loving, be compassionate. And peace, the word peace is not just like a, you know, a Christmas word. Peace, like why did Jesus greet people? Peace be with you. My peace I give unto you. Peace on earth and goodwill to me. Why does that word keep repeating throughout? Why, why does the very vibe of the consciousness of Krishna or Buddha entail, and, and masters, men and women throughout history, even just a mom in her house, people have been known to just know the importance of the peace of God here and now. And we forget because we're in pain. Don't judge yourself because you've acted out, but do bounce back. So I'm closing with this thought. I've covered as many of the words as I could, you know, that you guys gave in the time we had. But remember, remember this, that all the ways that we want to evaluate how enlightened we're becoming, probably the most important means of that measurement is not that stuff doesn't happen to you anymore. It's how quickly you see it and bounce back. Okay, got that? Catch it sooner. And if I don't catch it sooner today, and I go, oh my God, I went totally insane and went, you know, just went crazy on everybody in my life. Apologize and make amends. That's why Jesus was saying, there's no limit to the number of times you should forgive somebody when they mess up. He doesn't mean enable hurtful behavior, but he's talking about you too. There's no number of times that there's a limit you shouldn't be forgetting, forgiving yourself. Right? Love is forgiving. Hate is is forgetting. Love, forgiving. Hate, forgetting. It's taking, but it's also, I forget who I am. Anytime you hate, anytime you're selfish, you're not a bad person, but you forgot who you are. You can't know who you are and be kind, and not be kind. You can't really know who you are and struggle in all the ways that humans struggle. Knowing who I am will mirror in my life as nicer and nicer and nicer people in my life. And there'll be one that screams in some way. They represent the part of me that hasn't gotten there yet. Forgive them. They know not what they do. I'm not talking about enabling hurtful behavior because I can stand in my center, back to clarity, I can stand in my center and say no to hurtful behavior. How quickly do I catch myself and bounce back? Can I say no to somebody without hating them? That's fifth dimensional consciousness and more. Okay? So we're going to step into a short, a brief meditation. But today, let's, let's absorb a bit of what we've shared here today. Please, if you've heard anything that seems to contradict your beliefs or what other things you've heard, guys, let the things go. Don't worry about it. You don't need to have to, you know, I need to believe what I... Just relax. The things that made sense to you, let them integrate. Breathe them in and give thanks for them. So... Eyes closed. Eyes closed, please.
and start with tuning into anything you heard that made sense to you. Anything that felt right to you. Breathe it in and let it become you know, something that adds to your consciousness. you're deserving and willing to integrate anything you heard that was profound, no matter how profound. One is with God. I accept it now. No limits. Is there anything you heard today that seems too much for you? And if it is, that's fine. Ask yourself, why is it too much? Is it because Michael was wrong? Is it because I don't believe? But just take an honest look at anything you heard that you think it's too much. You, you can't be true, that I'm holy, that I'm divine or whatever. Think about it for a moment and own what you think is too much for you to be. yourself, what was the thing you heard that was uh, the most out there that you were willing to embrace and integrate? Something maybe new or something a little out there. What did you hear that you kind of went, you know, maybe tune in and own that.
joy. Try to find a feeling of joy over everything we just shared. The things you struggled and pushed away and said it's too much, you now see it. Feel happy that you saw it. The things you did embrace, feel joy, feel happy. Like, wow, something's happening. I'm shifting consciousness. But if you can't be happy and joyous about rising and raising consciousness, then why are we doing it? Joy is the natural emotion feeling that comes from doing beautiful work. Feel that and quietly and gently give thanks the next half minute and then gradually stretch out, but take your time with that. Relaxed breathing, gratitude, wow. There are so many places I could be, so many thoughts I could be having worldly oriented, and I'm so glad this is what I chose. That's called, right, a choice, but I made a good decision. Anytime I choose something that brings me closer to love, peace, joy, oneness, it's a really good decision. So give thanks. We're going to do our closing prayer in just a moment. But I want to thank everybody, you know, obviously for, for being here. And just remember, part of what I'm saying, it's about consciousness, right? So, so all the stuff you can do, read books, meditate, sound healings, um, prayer, raising kids, all the stuff we can do. It's not about what you do, it's how you do it. What consciousness are you in when you do it? And think of all the stuff as being here, but your consciousness is here. So I'm going to do techniques, I'm going to do technologies, I'm going to do prayers, meditations, forgiveness exercises. Why? To get me here. This is the, con this is the most important thing. Not what I do, this. And learn more and more to do the things in the consciousness of who you really are. Is that making sense? You know, that's what it's about. And for now, for now, it helps that music, the sounds, the tones, the meditation techniques, for now, the crystals, everything helps while I'm remembering who I am. I sometimes say this odd line that it takes some people to, to, to get at first, but as long as you think you're a what, you're going to need a who. Okay? So, if you identify with yourself as simply being a thing, then it still helps to have a who, a Jesus, a Buddha, a Joe Blow, and Mother Teresa, and you know whomever, to sort of look to your, your mother, whomever it is that you ever have thought to be a really good image of quality and integrity, it's okay to do that. One day, and it is their intention, that we remember that we are the same consciousness as them, and even more, because even Jesus said, I can only give you so much for now. And that's like, that's a hugely humble statement for a great teacher like that. So for now, we're all going back to clarity. But you have to have a half clarity before a full clarity. Okay? 
And that's what we're doing. That's what Ascension's all about. It's seeing I'm going from a dense third dimensional yucky world to a higher world while I'm still here. And then I rise to a different consciousness. If you can't get it here, I always say, Earth is like the cosmic New York. If you can do it here, you can get it anywhere. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> anyway. So, so, so thank you for being with us. And I, and I know some of these things, human struggles, the foods, what you're going to do. Uh, should I be this food? Relax. You're a holy child of God. What diet do you feel like doing? Oh, no, but my friend said. Next time your friends tell you what you have to eat, do this. Here's my new diet. What does that mean? I'm a breatharian fasting. <laughs> you know, just mess with people. Come up with some answers, you know. <clears throat> anyway, and, and people will try all kinds of things. Cursing intimacies and bodies and... It's... Stop. Stop. How can I be loving today? And do that with whom you're with, if you're with somebody. If you're alone, definitely be loving to yourself. Foods that feel nourishing to you, you know... Start here, instead of telling the world what to do or the world telling you what to do. Who are you, by the way? Well, I, I don't know, but they say that the world's going to tell you. When you're this age, you're supposed to have this illness. And if you're a man or a woman, this is how you're supposed to behave. Why does anybody keep listening to them? They've been wrong for a billion years, just based on their credibility. Like, they're like horrible weathermen. Like, they're never right, so why listen to them? Have you ever met anybody that was older and didn't have the diseases they're supposed to have at that age? If one pulled it off, why can't you? Just start believing in those supernatural things. And it's all true. There, there are light beings. There are angels. There is B Bigfoot. Does exist. I swear. The, I swear. And as soon as the government denies something, you'll know oh, that it must be true. Just, I mean, why do you need people to have to convince you of that? Just go, yeah. I mean, it really makes sense. Fear is not going to be my teacher anymore. Love, love, love is my teacher. And love, by the way, is the voice of the Divine Mother calling us home. Please stand for our closing prayer. I very much appreciate everybody's patience for going a little extra today, but it was well worth it. I want to uh, applaud our musicians for bringing such an amazing gift. Right. I want to point out, and I mean this, you know, sincerely, uh, John's got and, and um, Jade have, you know, CDs and things available. If you'd like to check those out, please do so in the foyer. We have our event this afternoon, so God bless you. And remember, I, I'm, I'm sincerely telling you folks that are in that event, I think that it might be sold out, so I don't know if anybody else can still sign up, so I can't speak for that. But I'm telling you, the folks that are attending that, God bless you. Thank you for doing things you know to be true. Because the world is forgetting so quickly. So I mean that. You're a great symbol to us, just like we're a great symbol to others by being here on a Sunday. So thank you very much. The closing prayer is something that we don't just say to God. We, we, we claim it for ourselves, the way we recite it. And it's on your bulletin. So we begin with, the light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We, we are. The of God. Wherever we go, God is. I am. We are. And so it is. Absolutely and always. God bless. We'll see you all soon. Bye bye.